Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about packing lunches. Um, contrary to what most homesteaders do, uh, our family does not homeschool. Um, God has called us to send our children to a private Christian school that is local. And although our school offers a lunch program, we pack our children's lunches mostly every morning. So uh, we are motivated to pack their own lunches by two things. Um, number one is nutrition and number two is price. So our budget. I know that I can pack my children's lunches for a lot cheaper than the cost of the school lunch program. And I also know that I have the skills to pack a lot more nutrition into their lunches than what they would be getting at the school lunch program. So because I don't have a full-time job, I do think that YouTube definitely qualifies as a part-time job because it does take up quite a bit of my time. I know that I can save us money by using my time to make nutritious lunches rather than saving time and purchasing prepackaged, pre-made foods for their lunches. And in that way, I am also nourishing their bodies to the best of my ability. Now, we try not to be legalistic about their lunches because children need some freedom. Too. And I'm not 100% against store-bought snacks as a treat or something special for your lunches. I just need majority of their lunches to be highly nutritious food. So now that fall has kind of settled in and we've kind of really hit a routine with morning chores and you know getting everybody off to school, I feel and since the garden has slowed down a little bit and not every day is consumed with canning and preserving foods, I feel like it's time for me to focus on making sure that there is healthy and nutritious snacks available for the children's lunches. Like I said, our children attend a private Christian school and it's small, so every all kindergarten through 12th dismisses for lunch at the same time. And so everybody has lunch at the, you know, at the same time and about 75% of the time, we have leftovers from the night before that Mitchell and Hadassah, the two older children, put into a glass container. And then they can go into the school kitchen and heat those leftovers. And then the three little boys take, go to Mitchell and Hadassah and they get served their main course from the leftovers. And this has served our family so well over the last probably eight years um, that I really, when I cook for the family, that's always my goal to have leftovers to put in their lunches the next day. Today, uh, I'm going to show you some of the snacks that we put in, but I've got to refill my ranch dressing mix container because we use this in a couple different ways and I don't have enough. So first I'm gonna show you how I make my ranch powder. You can use the packets in any of these recipes. I'm going to show you how I make my ranch powder. So first of all, we're gonna put two tablespoons of minced onion. And then we're gonna put two tablespoons of onion powder. We're gonna put one tablespoon of garlic powder. We're going to put four teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of dill, one teaspoon of thyme, and one teaspoon of basil. We're also going to put a teaspoon of parsley flakes, and this didn't get real fine, 
So I'm going to crush this up until I have about a teaspoon. And you can adjust any of these and make this recipe your own. And then I'm going to put two to three dunks of this stevia in. Now this is completely optional, but um, we like it with a little bit of sweetener. Anyway, there's my ranch powder. I'm just gonna shake that all up. And it looks like I could have made a double recipe and filled this up, but for now, that is a single recipe. And when we use this, I actually keep this tablespoon measure in here. Okay, so now that we've mixed our ranch, we're gonna make some ranch dressing. And I've got a cup of mayonnaise, and I'm going to add a cup of Greek yogurt. Well, look at me, making a mess. What else is new? I'm just messy in the kitchen. It's okay, I clean up my own messes. So if you're making like a dressing for a salad, you could add a little milk to this mayonnaise and yogurt, or you could use kefir or kefir, however you wanna say it, to make it a thinner, more pourable dressing. You can also use sour cream instead of Greek yogurt. I use Greek yogurt because that's what I almost always have on hand. There is two tablespoons of ranch powder in one packet. So for this one cup of yogurt and one cup of mayonnaise, you'll want two tablespoons, like one packet of ranch powder. One, two. So there we go, there we've got our ranch dip. So now here's our very first lunch option. A little bit of ranch dressing. And you can do any veggies that you want with that. Right now we are offering carrots because the carrots are ready in the garden. And we're keeping some carrots and I'm pretending that this is for a seven or eight year old boy. And even though they really like carrots and dips, dip and sitting down here at home, they would probably eat twice this amount. When they're at school and they wanna go run and play with their friends, I know that they're not gonna take the time to eat a lot of carrots and dip. Now the thing that I didn't mention before is each of my children's classrooms has a refrigerator. So when they get to school, they put their entire lunch in the refrigerator and things like this um, stay cold. However, you could put an ice pack in their lunch. If you don't have the option for a refrigerator, you could put an ice pack in their lunch and set this ranch dressing next to it and it would um, keep it chilled enough until lunchtime or snack time. You can use any veggies. Um, we could use celery or peas or whatever you have in season in your garden or available to you at the grocery store. So a batch of ranch dressing like this, I'll keep it in the refrigerator for up to a month. When we have a salad, I'll just take some of this from here and add some milk, maybe a little more salt and thin it down a little bit so that it makes a nice dressing instead of a dip. So the next thing we're going to make also includes this ranch powder and a bag of store brand pretzels and some good healthy grass-raised tallow. And I'm going to make some ranch pretzels. So first of all, I'm going to melt my tallow and I've just got a pot with water and my glass measuring cup. You could pop it into the microwave if you want. So tallow is beef fat or fat from cows and it is highly nutritious and it's one of those good fats that are perfect for healthy brain development and just healthy body development overall. So I love to use tallow. You could use lard or olive oil or coconut oil or your favorite oil. If you're using a liquid oil, you don't even have to um, melt it. You can just go on to the next step. Okay, we have our tallow melted. We've got our ranch powder. 
and we've got our pretzels. So seasoned pretzels is probably one of my biggest hacks and I'm known to overuse it. However, buying a one pound bag of plain mini pretzels, here is where my, where my consciousness of our grocery bu budget comes in. Have you seen those seasoned pretzels? Have you tasted those seasoned pretzels? Like the Dots pretzels that are like seven, eight, ten bucks a bag. And my family can go through those in a day. And that just absolutely does not fit into our regular grocery budget. Um, that's more of a treat for special oca occasions. But this absolutely fits in our grocery budget because this bag is like a little over $2, between $2 and $3. So, so we're gonna dump all the pretzels into the bag, into the dish. And then we're gonna take one packet of ranch seasoning or two tablespoons. And we are going to mix that into our oil or our fat. And then we're gonna pour it over all those pretzels. And we're gonna toss them. So the other day, the UPS man brought me a large box from Amazon. I hadn't ordered anything. And in the box, the box was filled with this USA Pan brand bakeware. So if it was you that sent these to my house, Thank you very much. I am loving them and I will put the link in the description. The one thing I did not expect with my Instagram account and my YouTube account having grown so much over the last couple months is the amount of emails I get from businesses wanting me to promote their product. And they all start out the same saying, we love your account. We think you'd be a perfect fit for us. And I know that those emails are just sent out en masse because most of them are for beauty products or jewelry. And if you know me at all, you know that I'm not huge into makeup and I don't even have my ears pierced. You rarely, if ever, see me wearing jewelry. So most of the emails I get, I'm just like, you're not a good fit. I mean, if you would have paid attention to who, who we really are, you would know that we're not a good fit. Um, but whoever this is, yes, we are a good fit. USA made bakeware, that is a good fit for my account. So I'm gonna take my pretzels. I'm gonna divide them on these pans making sure to get all that goodness out. I'm going to put them in the oven at 250 degrees. And I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and I'm gonna stir them every 10 minutes. This is a great thing to put into your oven. Um, let's say you just got done baking cookies or something and your oven's still warm. You can turn your oven off and put your pretzels in and just let them in there until your oven cools down and save some energy that way. So I'm going to leave the pretzels in the oven for about 30 minutes, stirring them every 10 minutes. So the next thing we're going to make is like a homemade cliff bar or a homemade protein bar. And Remember that all your recipes will be linked in the description. I like to tell my kids that you can't have chocolate chip cookies in your lunch every day. Chocolate chip cookies are a treat. Um, but these protein bars have given us many, many miles and miles of lunches um, because you can change them up with different ingredients. So they're not as likely to get bored as quickly. So the first thing we need is one cup of honey. And then we need one cup of nut butter of any kind. We like to use peanut butter. That's probably our, our favorite. And we use the once again nut butter from Azure Standard and I will link that. And we get it in this big bucket full and we store it in the refrigerator. 
and it looks like it's almost time for us to order some more. So now I've got one cup of honey in here. I'm just gonna add my peanut butter until the honey comes up to two cups. And the one thing about natural peanut butter, so it's only peanuts and, and salt. So it's only peanuts and salt in here, is that when you buy it, it look it's separated. The oil and the solids have separated. And what I do is I throw it into my Bosch mixer and mix it all up, put it back in the bucket and store it in my refrigerator and that keeps it from separating. Now this nut butter and honey mixture, you can use this in almost every recipe that calls for marshmallows and butter, like think Rice Krispie squares. You can use honey and nut butter instead of the marshmallows and just mix it together that way. So my peanut butter and honey mixture is melting beautifully and I forgot to add the vanilla so I'm gonna do that now. And since the nuts I was using are raw walnuts and they're not salted, I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt to this peanut butter and honey mixture. So while we wait for the honey and the peanut butter to melt together, we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. So three cups of Rice Krispies and two cups of rolled oats. And then we need half a cup of finely chopped nuts of some kind. I'm using walnuts. And I will link this little chopper. You could also use your blender. There's my finely chopped nuts. For the basic recipe, remember to keep your dry ingredients to about six cups. Um, if you go over that, then you'll have to have more peanut butter and honey to make it stick together. But you can add any kinds of seeds or nuts, just adjust everything else so that you have about six cups of dry ingredients. And my goal with this account is not to make followers of my recipes. My goal is to empower you to experiment with your own recipes, to go rogue with your recipes. Um, add whatever you want to your dry mixture. And if your kids don't like it, adjust it. I'm not adding any dried fruit because at least two out of the five of the kids do not like raisins or dried fruit in their cliff bars. So I want to fill as many lunches as possible with these cliff bars so I am not adding the dried fruit. So once your peanut butter and honey mixture is all melted together like this, you're gonna pour it into your dry ingredients. And then you're going to mix it all together and then you're going to press it into a pan and then you're going to take your cliff bars and you're going to put them into the refrigerator for a couple hours to chill them before you cut them. So because we don't spray our apple trees, all I really need is a quick rinse to get the dust off of them. So here's what I'm going to do to keep my apples from turning brown. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice. If you are using fresh lemon juice, use about two tablespoons per cup of water. So you're gonna fill your dish with apples and we know there's plenty of lemon juice in here. So then I'm just gonna bring the water level up. So now I'm going to show you a protein apple dip that I often make to go with their apples. Um, they don't often put the apple di the dip in their lunch here again because they don't have time to sit and dip apples. Um, but we often use this protein dip as an after-school snack. So for this apple dip, I use about two parts peanut butter to one part Greek yogurt. 
and there we've got our protein and fat and one part honey. And I mix that all together. So I've been in my kitchen all day and I'm feeling the need to get outside. So I'm taking those apple cores to Dave, our donkey. You want one too? Hmm? And then, of course, there's always popcorn. Um, using popcorn and tallow and a popcorn maker. And that eliminates so many ingredients um, when you compare it to microwave popcorn. And the other thing is it's a lot cheaper than buying microwave popcorn for five lunches every week, every day of the school week. So you can also get an air popper, which we sometimes use if we are short on time and there's really nothing for lunches, we'll just hurry up, pop some in the air popper. Um, but this is still my favorite because I can make a whole lot of popcorn at one time. You, of course, can use any kind of oil in your popcorn popper. I am using tallow because that is the oil that we can raise most of. That's the fat that we can raise the most of here on the homestead. So this is what's most readily available to us and it adds a good healthy fat to a carb snack. I'm going to add some melted butter. And then I'm going to sprinkle it generously with salt. And you can even get fancy, make a ranch popcorn. So then what I do to help things go real smoothly for us is I take a lunch baggie, I put a portion in it, and then because these bags, these glad fold over lunch bags don't seal airtight, and because the zip ones are too expensive, this is what I do. I take a reused Ziploc bag so my gallon Ziplocs, I save them. If they're not dirty, I save them and reuse them. So I take this gallon Ziploc and fill it with baggies of pretzels or snacks. This saves us time in the morning. <laughs> And it saves mess because when you have five children wanting to pack their own lunch, let's say I just put all the pretzels in here and everybody's filling their own. The little boys are going to probably get more pretzels than they can eat and they're going to waste some. Plus they drop some and who remembers to close the bag. So getting them all out in portions like this helps a lot. And the older kids, if they think they can eat more pretzels 
or more snack than they just grab two bags. And this way I can still seal it up airtight and the pretzels won't get stale. So if you're at the very beginning of eliminating extra ingredients from your family's diet, or if you are just starting to make lunches from scratch, you're gonna have to give your family grace because the palate, your taste buds, are a funny thing and it takes them a while to get adjusted to nutritious food versus food that has flavor enhancers added. If your family's anything like mine, you cannot go, go cold turkey because they're really gonna miss their Doritos and then their Dots pretzels and their Cliff um, granola bars. They're really gonna miss those because those have flavor enhancers that override the body's natural sense of taste. When our older daughters were toddlers, we had a health scare with one of our daughters. And when we started researching for alternative ways of healing her body over the surgery that the medical doctors recommended, we found that our family, most of our children, are very, very sensitive to artificial flavors, artificial colors, and a whole number of other artificial additives that are in processed foods, like candy and chips and things like that. And their body cannot eliminate all those toxins fast enough, and then their organs start showing that they are toxic, like their body just cannot handle that. And we were seeing behavioral issues. And to this day, I believe that if our family were to eat a regular diet full of food dye and artificial flavors and colors, at least two, if not more of our children would probably be diagnosed with some kind of learning or attention disorder. Cause that is how severely artificial flavors and colors and additives affect our family's behavior. That's part of the story behind why we were motivated to keep our diet simple and nutritious. Anyway, so regardless of all that, convenience just beckons me sometimes. And I fall into the habit of buying foods that are laden with artificial things. And in some of our children, it doesn't affect as much of, as others. So then we're able, you know, to kind of, you know, let some things in that I normally wouldn't. But when the three little boys were added to our family in a short time, um, convenience was what helped me survive. We fell into the habit of buying those big boxes of chips, like with the individual snack bags of chips. And it got to the point where the children were eating only the chips that they loved, leaving their least favorite ones, and then saying, we need more chips because we've only got the ones left that we don't like. That was kind of a wake up call for me where I'm like, oh my goodness. But going cold turkey, was not an option because over those couple school terms where I had three babies in the house, their palate had gotten so adjusted, accustomed to the flavor enhancers and artificial flavors that going cold turkey just wasn't an option. And they, um, they did not have grace for bags of popcorn when they knew they, they could have had Doritos. Here's what we did. I started buying one box for a month, one box of chips for a month. And then when we ran out of chips, we would you know, use the homemade snacks. And they would say, hey, we need chips. And I'd say, okay, write, them on the write it on the grocery list. And as time went on, I just conveniently started forgetting and offering more homemade snacks. And it took a whole school term 
but they no longer ask for store-bought chips and it's not like we never ever buy buy store-bought chips we still buy store-bought chips on occasion for special occasions or when we're in a pinch um, we will buy them but the whole family knows that they're just um, treats they're not part of our everyday diet so here we go, we've got their salty snacks for the next week or week and a half. I didn't even count how many bags are in here, um, but if we start getting low, I will just make some more. I try to change things up and switch things up with their salty snacks. So my cliff bars are chilled and I'm gonna wrap those up in individual bars. You know, I sure can't forget about hard boiled eggs and what a great addition they are to our children's lunches. So I bring my water to a boil and then I make sure to use refrigerator cold eggs and plunge them into the boiling water. I set my timer for 10 minutes. So after the 10 minutes are up, I drain the hot water off of the eggs and then plunge them into an ice water bath. And this is the method that we have found works best to help us peel farm fresh eggs. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what our morning routine looks like before school. So this week is Mitchell's turn to do house and kitchen chores. And he is making us breakfast while we head to the barn and do animal chores. So it is barely daylight in late September at 6.30 when we go out to do chores. So now that breakfast is all done and cleaned up, it's time for the kids to pack their lunches. So I get all their options out and the little boys get to choose two options. And the older children, I leave on their own to pack their lunches. I do not supervise how much food they put or don't put into their lunches. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video on lunches. Thank you everybody so much for watching and don't forget in the description I will have a link to all your free printable recipes that I shared in today's video. 
in next week's video my plan is to share recipes and how to's um, for packing lunches when we need a cold lunch or when we don't have any leftovers to pack as a main dish.